Hello, I'm Dr. Brian Fraser, and in this video I'll be showing how to use Android Studio to create a very simple sample uh, initial uh, application. So to start with, I'm going to run Android Studio, launching it from the Start menu here under Windows, and it loads up, and I can choose what to do. I'm going to build a new Android Studio application, and I'm going to call it, I don't know, uh, Test App. Test Application. I um, can select most of the other things here if I like. Uh, using the company domain will then give me different package names. So I might put in here something like, uh, uh, yeah, call it, you know, um, my dem video demos. And normally you might put in like your institution name or something like that for the your URL. And the rest of the paths and so forth look okay to me. I'm going to then click Next and go through the wizard. Uh, you can select what you're going to target. I'm just going to target a standard phone or tablet. Uh, I'm going to use the default here of the uh, API, the application program interface of 15. The latest is currently up here in the 20s, oops, down here in the 20s, um, but by going with an older version that I'm targeting, I will get more devices that can run my program. I'm going to go with an empty activity to start with. Uh, if you want to do something different, you can pick that. And main activity sounds like a great name to start with. So let's just take the defaults. So then it's going to pre create my sort of simple hello world application and fill it in, set up the build process, and uh, get me ready to roll. It takes a minute maybe to load up. If you're missing this window here on the left, the project window on the left, you can press Alt-1 on the keyboard and it will then show it to you. Uh, so now I've got sort of the basic sort of starting point of my application. What I want to sort of work with to begin with is the layout. So it's already loaded it for me, the activity main XML. And I can find this here on the left hand side. I'm in the Android view. So I'm going to under app, resource, layout, and here it is selected. Now I'm for some reason getting some sort of layout here about the, uh, or issue about the layouts I've chosen, so I can actually fix that by going up here, and I'm going to switch to a different um, view just to make it so it fits on my screen better, and I'm going to say app theme, and I now can pick a different theme, it's a problem with the theme I've got selected. So I'm going to go hollow light and click OK. And we can see here it's just a hello world. So, without further ado, let's run it. Um, I can go run, and then I'm going to run my app. You'll note here that the hotkey is Shift F10. Um, I don't currently have a Android phone plugged into my computer, nor do I have any uh, Android virtual devices running, but I'll bring up the window and allow me to select who I want to use one. It gives me this one, I think, by default, and so I'll just say yes, I do. We can see at the bottom it's giving me all the information about the emulator starting up. Uh, the big thing here is HAX, H-A-X, it gives me um, some emulation, so some hardware supported emulation provided by Intel. Um, I can ignore this, uh, cannot launch the emulator because it actually does launch, I can come up here in the background, and I'm going to rescale it just so it fits in this video. Um, I'm occasionally getting some uh, EGL surface attrib errors. Uh, turns out not to affect my performance of what's going on. So I'm not sure what that is, um, but it works out okay. So this is my application. Great. Uh, currently does nothing though. So let's, let's move it forward. Um, let's have a look at how we define things. For the user interface, I'll just uh, make this, get rid of that with a shift escape. Um, and I'll zoom in a little bit so we can see what's going on. So these are the ac uh, parts of my application. Uh, if I click on, for example, the Hello World text box, it'll tell me over here it's a text view and a few of the properties about it. So what I want to do is I want to put in a button so that we can click it. So I'm going to click on the left here and I'm going to drag and drop the button. This is a relative layout. I can put it kind of anywhere I like in here. Uh, maybe like I can center it on my, ent my entire window. Again, some of it's off the screen, so. I'm this is actually the center. I can put it in the top right. Uh, can anywhere, anywhere I like. I'm going to put it just underneath this. Oops, just underneath this "Hello World" text view. Yeah, for some reason, it's not liking that. Put it down there. There we go. So now, if I want direct control over what's going on, I can also view it in the text format. So here is the actual XML text that is going to be um, sort of generating my 
what I'm in working with. Um, the funny thing here is that it's already got an error, and that might have been problem by problem. Um, the issue was is that there's no uh, ID on this initial text field. So let's uh, get rid of that, and I'm just gonna maybe let's put it in the center. Prevent any problems with that. And we can see that as I drag it around, this changes. So for example, layout centered vertically true, centered verti uh, centered horizontally true. And if I drag it to the top right, it all changes there. So that's quite fen phenomenal. You can kind of in real time see what's going on. Now if I were to run this, which I can do, I can just go Shift F10, and it will rerun it. I will go and switch back to my emulator. We can see it relaunching here. I click on the button, it looks like I'm clicking it, but of course nothing actually happens. I haven't told the application what it should do when I click the button. So let's go do that. Now the way I'm going to do this is through Java. So I've got my activity main.xml is going to be linked to my main activity. And that was actually loaded here for me by default. So what I want to do is I'm going to put in a comment. We're going to fill in the comments in just a second. I want to wire up the button to do stuff. And in order to do this is two steps. First step is I need to get the button and then I need to set what happens when the user clicks. So let's work on that. Two steps. First step, getting this button. Well, it turns out that Java provides us, or Android rather, provides us a class called button, capital B, button, and we call it BTN. And it's giving me an error already. It basically says it doesn't understand what button is. It's got a hint. Maybe you're thinking of android.widget.button, which I am. So I'm going to hit Alt, Enter on my keyboard. And up here we see that it actually updated my imports for me. And it brought in this android.widgets.button. So that's exactly what I wanted. So I'm going to now need to get that button from my activity. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to call find view by ID, so I'm gonna, it's already coming up with the intelligent suggestion, so I'm going to hit enter to select it. And then here I need to give it the resource ID. Well, let's go look at where that comes from. So here, this has been given a name. I could edit it here, but in fact I'm just going to, yeah, in fact that's reasonable for it to edit it with. So it's got an ID. I can change this ID to be something more meaningful. So let's give it something like, I'm going to call it, I like the BTN prefix, I'm going to call it BTN do magic. Actually, in fact, let's just leave that for a moment. I'm going to go back to the design window here. Yeah, and BTN do magic. That works for me. And then I can also set the text down here. And it's called do the magic. If I go back to the text view, we can see here it's just filled in the values equivalently. Let's go back to the activity. So I now need to give it the value of that button. How do I get that ID? Well, in fact, in my activity, I have here this at plus ID, and that tells Android Studio that I actually want to generate an ID for this. I'm not using a pre-existing ID. I'm generating the ID and I'm going to name it button do magic. In the build process, when these things actually execute, it will then compile that into something for me. And the way I access it is through the R class. I'll show you what that is in a minute. I say r.id, because I want to access the IDs. And here are all the IDs that it knows about. And I want to use button do magic. And that will now give me the button. Except if I get an error, it says, well, it found, as in it's giving me an android.view.view, but it needs an android.widget.button. It turns out that button inherits from widget, or from view rather, so I can just cast it. And this is generally what I'll need to do. I'll need to call find view by ID to give me the element, and then I'll cast it to the type that I want, and then I'll access it here. Now, once I've got that, I can go ahead and start to use it. So I can say button, dot, and then I could kind of search through here to see all the different things I can do. I could, for example, set the text directly. So when you um, start up, it sets the text in my Java. But I really want to have it respond to clicks. So that's going to be an on-click listener. So I'm going to set the, select the first one here, a set on-click listener. Now listeners are kind of uh, a complicated piece of Java. It turns out we're going to use what's called an anonymous class.
So the way we're going to get that is in the, I can say new, I need to build a new anonymous class. And this has to be a view, because it's in the view class that it's defined. And this is an on click listener. So that's the first one I want here. So view.onclick listener, and I'll take it. So this is going to build me a new view on click listener. View on, on click listener is an interface. And at the moment, I can't instantiate it because it's an interface. So I'm going to go Alt Enter to bring me down the selection of uh, kind of quick fixes. And I want to implement the methods. It comes up here with a select what I want to implement. And in fact, I, want to, I need to implement them all. So say OK. And here we have it. It fills in the structure for me. What's going on with this? Well, I'm still calling button.setOnClickListener. I open the bracket here, and we can see that it closes the bracket down here. So I'm passing in. What am I passing in? Well, I am passing in a new instance of an on-click listener. And this is not something that was previously defined for me. I've got the interface to work on, but I need to build my own. So I say, give me a new on-click listener. And it's an anonymous class, because I'm doing it in line here. And it has an on-click method. And this is the only thing I really need to work with in it. And once I'm here, I can do anything I like. Any piece of valid Java code will go here. Uh, so let's just put out a log message to start with. So I'm going to say log dot, and I can pick a log level. Info is good. And this will now um, allow me to put out a message, sort of a debug message. Um, I need to give it a tag. We see the first parameter is a tag. And so I'm going to put in here something like my app. We'll see a better way to do this in just a minute. And I give it a message. Uh, this is a magic log message. Again, it doesn't know what uh, log we're talking about, so it suggests one. I'll s take it by hitting Alt Enter, and that came now up here into the imports shown above. Uh, these imports can be collapsed here, rolled up. Uh, it's sort of a way to hide them. We don't usually require, uh, care about them. So let's see what happens. Shift F10, run it. Back here in my emulator, I click Do the Magic. It looks like nothing's happening. Let's just see here. I need to, I think, bring up my terminal. Not my terminal. Not the terminal. I want the Android monitor. There we go. So it was hidden. I can click this button in the bottom left to kind of show and hide an extra level. And I want the Android monitor. And now I can see exactly what's going on. And so these are all the messages that I'm popping out. I'll go back here to my, oops emulator, and every time I click it, you can see a new message is going to pop up. OK, so we have our button. Our button does something. That is a fantastic start. But what we really want to do is maybe make something pop up on the UI. And to do that, we're going to use what's called a toast. So I'm going to go here, and I'm going to call the toast class. And I can now say I want to make a toast. and then I need to pass it in a few things. The first thing it's telling me is I need to give it a context, which is effectively I need to give it a reference to the current UI that's being shown. And I can actually give it to the application context. The easy way to get that is to say get application context. Here it is. It's coming up as the uh, default one. Get the application context. And that would basically say I'm on this part of the user interface. Show me a little toast message. I can now either give it a resource ID, which will be uh, described in a later video, um, very similar to how the button ID was created in the R uh, resource class. I can now, or I can put in a character string. So let's put a character string in here. It's magic. And I even give it a duration. The best way to get a duration is through the toast class itself. So toast, dot, and I can pick two, short or long. Uh, short's pretty good for little kind of short messages. If you've got a, a message the user's going to have to read through and really understand, go with long. So I'm going to go with short here, because this is quite trivial. Now that this has made me a toast message, there's one final thing. I need to call dot show. And I'm going to put it on its own line here, just to kind of make it really clear I'm not only building one, but showing it as well. I could have just put this dot show at the very end of my previous line up here. This is a usual way of doing a toast message, so you don't have to build it, reference it, and later show it. So let me rerun this. Uh, Shift F10. Oops. Sure, we will use the same emulator here. We'll see it restart. I click Do Magic, 
and at the very bottom we get the It's Magic Toast. Very nice. Okay, so that's basically what I wanted to show here. I want to go into a bit more depth on a couple points. The first one was with the log message. I said that we don't necessarily need to put this in every time. If I go back up here, where did I click on it? It's going to show me it each time I click the message. Eh, I can't find it now. That's fine. Um, every time I've got a log message, I need to keep putting this in. So a standard way to get rid of that is to say, well, let's just, for my class, I'm going to define what's called the tag. So static, final, uh, string, and make it private, and I'm going to call it tag. And we're just going to call it my app. Or maybe I'll make it something more descriptive, like uh, uh, demo initial app. I can name it anything I like. Basically, in the log, it's just going to come up as this. And then I'm going to say, well, let's take this tag, and I'm just going to replace it here. And then each of my log messages would come up with that same thing. If I copy and paste this to a new class, I just change the name of the tag at the top. So that's one little improvement. Uh, the next improve or next thing I wanted to show is where do all of those R resources come from? We can see here that at the top we can actually set which layout is being shown for this class using this set content view r.layout.activity main, and that's the activity main here that we're seeing. And then later on, I said, well, I want to get the button, so that's r.id.buttonmagic. Now, it turns out that these are compiled by Android Studio, and every time I actually go and build it and deploy it, I can then see what it's working with. On the view on the left, it's not going to show it to me by default. I've got to switch views, so I'm going to click on this Android, and I don't want the Android view, I'm just going to show the project view. That's going to show me the actual folders in play. And then under App, this is where my project would normally go. Under the source folder is all my source code. I want to then go under the build folder, and then under generated, under sources, under R, under debug, and then here it is. This is the application I'm working with. Here's the R class. So I'm going to double click on it. Let's get rid of this one with a shift escape. And this is everything that the compiler is generating for me, all the IDs. So here it's got a bunch of different IDs for me. I know I called it, I think, magic something. So let's just uh, go through. Here we go. Had a few magics, and here's the one I'm actually interested in. So it's a public static final int, and it just gives it a number. And this number is going to correspond to some of the values and some resource packages that are um, sort of put in with my application when it's packaged up for deployment to the Android um, device, in this case, my virtual device. So we don't really care what this number is, other than we know that Android Studio and the build process will ensure that this number, because it's tied to this constant, are going to line up with the appropriate resources that show up on my screen. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. If you're interested in more information on accessing text views, uh, look for a uh, subsequent video.